Um, so uh, my name is Nate Haas. I'm a third year resident in emergency medicine. Uh, and along with the other authors listed here, our project was the safety and outcomes of a two bag protocol for management of DKA in adult ED patients. And so I think the background for our project is important to go through. And so as most of us are aware, the management of DKA is complex, uh, requires frequent titration of insulin, fluids, electrolytes, and dextrose. And I think this complicated flow sheet from the American Diabetes Association highlights just how complex it can be. And thus protocolized or kind of standardized care plans given the frequent need for blood draws and frequent titrations help simplify this. And so protocolized care uh, is definitely appealing for a multitude of reasons in DKA. And so traditionally, um, DKA has been managed with a insulin infusion and a single bag of IV fluids. Uh, these are excerpts from our institution's previous one bag uh, protocol. And you'll notice that there's a few different indications for either down titration or complete cessation of the insulin infusion. Um, if the uh, rate of decline of the glucose is too abrupt, glucose drops below certain levels, uh, the insulin infusion can be down titrated or stopped completely. And thus patients who are admitted with DKA may go periods of time without receiving any insulin without having their underlying derangements being addressed at all. And similarly, towards the bottom of the slide, uh, there's a, a frequent need for titration or changes uh, in the composition of the IV fluid being administered to the patient. And so similarly, if a uh, patient became relatively hypoglycemic, there'd be a need for um, completely pausing therapy, removing the bag of IV fluid, ordering a new bag of IV fluid with a higher dextrose concentration, and subsequently restarting. And so there's just potential for gaps in care um, for those reasons. Comparatively, the newer two-bag system <clears throat> uh, consists of a non-titratable continuous insulin infusion at a set rate um, that's not titrated under essentially any circumstances. And so the two bags refers to the two different bags of IV fluids that are hooked together in a Y formation uh, that contain similar electrolyte uh, concentrations but differing dextrose concentrations. And so just by titrating between the two bags, um, it, it allows for continuous, constant uh, infusion of insulin, continuous infusion of similar electrolyte and fluid compositions, but a rapidly titratable dextrose concentration. And so I think the best example or way to describe this is an episode of hypoglycemia. And so traditionally with the one bag system, uh, with relative hypoglycemia, both the insulin, uh, fluids, and electrolytes would need to be stopped. Um, subsequently, you'd have to call the pharmacy get a new bag of IV fluids with more dextrose, restart the fluids, and eventually restart the insulin. And so that time period is where um, there's potential for improvement. And so the newer two-bag system with an episode of hypoglycemia allows for continuous infusion of insulin, but simply just titrating um, the proportion of each of the two different fluid bags um, and which proportion you're administering them. And so this two-bag method has been used in practice and studied previously uh, primarily in pediatric patients. And so it's been associated with faster response times in IV fluid therapy changes, faster rates of correction of bicarbonate, ketones, and pH, and overall more cost-effective care. Um, and so this is strictly in pediatric patients, but we know that 80% of cases of DKA in the United States occur in adult patients. And so previously, neither the safety nor efficacy of a two-bag system had been studied in adults. And so a two-bag protocol was operationalized uh, in the U of M ED in 2015. And so some, uh, previous to this, uh, our institution had used a one-bag or kind of more traditional uh, method for management of DKA. And so we conducted a retrospective before and after study via a electronic medical record search to identify adult ED patients with either a diagnosis or impression of DKA uh, from 2013 to 2016. And so we manually reviewed the patients and excluded patients if their initial metabolic derangements were non-diagnostic of DKA, um, or if a patient had neither order set or both order sets used during their uh, care that could have complicated um, this analysis. And so we first compared the baseline demographics and metabolic derangements between the two cohorts, the one-bag cohort, kind of the traditional way, and the newer two-bag cohort. And essentially there are no differences, so the age, gender, 
vital signs, metabolic derangements, anion gap, uh, no statistically significant differences between the two groups. Uh, however, there was a difference in the uh, percentage of patients managed in EC3, and so we'll discuss that in a bit. Uh, we next looked at uh, these outcomes, specifically um, uh, time intervals to correction of acidosis. And you'll notice that the two-bag cohort experienced a correction of their metabolic acidosis about six hours sooner um, than the one-bag cohort, and these differences reached statistical significance. Similarly, they were liber uh, liberalized from their insulin infusion about six hours sooner and received their first dose of subcutaneous or long-acting insulin about six hours sooner um, than the cohort, uh, the one-back cohort. We also looked at resource utilization, uh, namely length of stay with a strong, tr strong trend uh, towards shorter length of stay in patients in the two-back cohort, about 22 hours shorter, although it didn't quite reach significance. Um, and we also looked at the number of bags of IV fluids charged to a patient and so you'll notice a pretty striking difference from 30 to 5, and uh, we hypothesize that this is secondary to the frequent need for um, previously throwing away an IV fluid bag, hanging a new bag, and et cetera. We also looked at safety outcomes, and importantly, there are no, uh, no statistically significant differences in the rates of hypoglycemia or hypokalemia, and actually there's a trend towards uh, safer care in the newer two-bag cohort. And so the biggest uh, con potential confounder or limitation is EC3. And I think most of us uh, in this room know that it's a nine bed ED ICU at the University of Michigan. And so it opened in 2015 or about midway through this study period. And so 94% versus 51% of the patients were managed in EC3 at some point. And so it's thus difficult to differentiate whether these outcomes were secondary to the um, more intensive nursing care and kind of overall closer, uh, higher quality critical care that these patients might have experienced. So in conclusion, uh, adult ED patients with DKA managed with a two-bag system as compared to a traditional one-bag protocol um, experienced an earlier correction of their acidosis, earlier liberation from an insulin infusion, uh, suggestion of uh, resource-preserving care, including fewer bags of IV fluid consumed, and a trend towards decreased length of stay and a strong trend towards safer care, namely lower rates of hypoglycemia or hypokalemia. Um, so for that, uh, thanks for your attention and open for any questions. Uh, excellent presentation. Could you also comment on <clears throat> patient disposition? Uh, one of the things that we've found that uh, you'd be able to comment on is you know, what happens to these patients after their DKA is resolved. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's uh, definitely confounded by EC3. And so we actually have a separate project that's uh, looked at that individually. And we know that with uh, opening of an ED ICU, um, the rate of ICU admission rate of floor admission and rate of discharge home are all significantly different since opening an ED ICU. Um, and it seems like a perfect place for something like this, like a, a potentially very critical illness with a relatively short um, duration of care. Anything else? Great, thanks Thank so you. much. Thanks. Thanks.